I want to start with a couple of very quick quotes. I think it's exactly what we need to keep the so-and-sos honest. Their approach to advocating for whatever cause is so creative, unique and in the end effective that they really see results. That's our David Koshy Kosh, the one and only, not quite as uh, famous as Julia Morrow, but almost, uh, saw the get-up movement. Uh, and yet at the same time as those kinds of quotes being out there, uh, we see very different uh, explanations of the Get Up movement. For example, one uh, from Erica Betts, who says that it's a new form of astroturfing, uh, that there is something particularly repugnant about an organisation which pretends to educate young people about policy issues while taking advantage of their political inexperience. And this coming despite the fact that in the Get Up movement, the biggest demographic is the 50-plus demographic. So I've, I've been asking myself the question recently, why is it that a movement of over 380,000 Australians can elicit such incredibly positive, but at the same time incredibly negative, responses? And today I'd like to explain what GetUp is, what GetUp isn't, and how a five-year-old movement is using the power of social media to win campaigns and keep working towards a progressive Australia. And in doing so, I really hope that there are some lessons in activist media models, as, uh, as today's program calls it, uh, about, uh, about the type of work we do, uh, but also uh, about what lies ahead uh, for online politics and the nexus between that and social media and online media. When the formation of Get Up was first announced, it was on the 7.30 report, uh, we set ourselves the goal at that point in time of reaching an ambitious goal, 100,000 Australians. Uh, and at the time, uh, Kerry O'Brien and Michael Brissenden had a bit of a chuckle about the fact that such a model was even possible. Uh, well, it was, and within months we reached that goal. And over the years, literally millions of actions online uh, have now been taken. And we're within a stone's throw now of reaching our goal of 400,000 members at the end of this year. To understand the rapid growth uh, of what started as an online movement, but now I believe is so much more, I think we need to look back at both the political and the technology uh, context within which our movement was formed. An important first point uh, is that Australians were already using the internet both for communicating about politics and for getting active uh, in political change at the time was, that GetUp was formed. Uh, we certainly weren't the first, as is sometimes reported, to use these kinds of tactics. In August 2005, uh, GetUp was set up, and in the early years, uh, the Howard government had one party control of the Senate. And there was a growing angst, I guess, about the deeply conservative nature uh, and the anti-democratic values of parts of the Howard government. But at the same time, I think it can also be said that there was little effective parliamentary opposition. And so GetUp had two challenges. Firstly, to work with progressive uh, Liberal Party members, and there are quite a number, uh, MPs and senators, to try and create change from within a party that at that time was increasingly lurching to the right. And secondly, we had the challenge of tapping into highlighting and amplifying public sentiment on key progressive issues. Issues like the question of whether our national broadcaster, the ABC, should receive a massive increase in funding so that it could do its job properly. Issues like whether children should be in detention, whether David Hicks should be tried at home, and whether women should have access to drugs like RU486. On all four of these key issues during the Howard government, we found a winning formula uh, that saw us create effective alliances uh, with progressive Liberal Party MPs. But what was key to this success was the rapid growth of our movement, which in turn was driven by the technology that existed at that time. In the mid-2000s, if we think back, I I'm sure that uh, we were all active in this scene at that time, uh, we saw the rapid transformation of the internet from, I guess, what you'd call Web 1.0 to Web 2.0. And I've been told that never to use the kind of phrasing of Web 1.0, Web 2.0, that it's so 2008. Uh, but I guess, if anything, actually, what GetUp has been trying to do in recent times uh, was begin to work on politics and Web 3.0. A world uh, 
that's not separate, where the internet's not separate from the world in which we live, where the internet is increasingly tangible and real in our lives and being used to ver for very real things beyond just shopping into deep political engagement. We were hoping to work towards a world, I guess, where people can get real things done online, like getting former refugees to Canberra to share their stories with key coalition senators about the unfair policy of detention debt for refugees and asylum seekers. Uh, a world that online, where online politics would help people actually win campaigns, uh, campaigns like stopping Labor's mandatory internet filter. And that helps, the work that we've done, I believe, helps people meet up in person as well. And this is one of the more interesting elements, I think, of the work that GetUp has been doing in these past few years, as we've tried to use the online environment not just as a meeting space of its own, but as a genuine recruitment tool, I guess similar to the way Obama did, a genuine recruitment tool uh, for real-world events as well. Events like the mental health vigils that we held across the country during the election. Uh, events like get-togethers, which is where literally thousands of GetUp members get together in local cafes and homes across the country to come up with their own campaign plans. In the mid-2000s, we were in the early stages, I think, of this move towards Web 2.0, uh, but we were still stuck, I think, in a somewhat backward frame, and that's something I want to refer back to later on. But first, as you probably already know, there are a lot of theories about what GetUp actually is. On the comments section of a story about uh, GetUp members going after the big banks, this was on Tuesday this week, a member of the public asked this question. When will someone actually tell us who GetUp really is? And within minutes came these responses. At Shadow, I am GetUp. At Shadow, I am GetUp too. The Shadow, like Meg, I am GetUp and my partner, sister, mother, father and many of my friends are too. <laughs> and in many respects, I think these comments define what GetUp is. Nothing more than a mouthpiece for 380,000 Australians dedicated to getting the values of progressive Australians heard. Not all Australians, not all Australians, but progressive Australians. Uh, and to get those views and values to be enacted by governments and corporations. When looking at what GetUp isn't, a useful place to return is to the earlier comments of Erica Betts, a coalition senator from Tasmania. In a recent speech, he made the suggestion that perhaps GetUp was an astroturf movement uh, what he means by this is that perhaps there are no real people uh, behind GetUp. Uh, it's manufactured, perhaps, by a small team uh, or maybe with just a small number of citizens behind it. Senator Abetz, in the same speech, also asked the AEC to investigate GetUp once again to see whether we can be classed as an associated entity uh, of Labor and the Greens. Labor and the Greens uh, was the claim that he somehow made. And the next day, talkback shock jock uh, Alan Jones said we were too closely aligned with the independents. So Labor, Greens and the independents. Uh, at the same time as this, uh, there is a senior minister in the Gillard government whose frustrations with GetUp, constantly keeping the ALP and the government accountable, have led him to place personally uh, place angry calls back to get up members who ring him uh, to try and ring his office to try and encourage uh, greater advancements in climate change policy or investments in mental health care, the likes of which the coalition have recently been committing themselves to. And I think many of these animosities are rooted within the mistaken belief that somehow GetUp's online movement is apolitical, that somehow there is this view that GetUp is saying we're apolitical. As Senator Abet said in his recent critique of online politics and the GetUp movement, and I quote, might I say from the outset that GetUp's activities would be perfectly legitimate if they just came out and admitted to being a left-wing activist group. And while we think there are important distinctions between progressive politics and left-wing politics, Senator Abetz, you heard it here first, it's true. We are not apolitical. We do stand for something, and as a movement, both online and on the ground, we aggressively pursue our agenda. All of these things are true. As you've probably seen, on some occasions, our approach uh, does create enemies. 
Uh, indeed, I guess you probably can see that contrarian number one, in my mind, uh, has been Senator Betts, who has the unique honour of writing uh, a piece of legislation that, ironically, has been declared unconstitutional on two occasions. Uh, and yes, it's true, we did play a big part in bringing down his legislation. Uh, the example, of course, being the High Court challenge, uh, which overturned, we thought, unconstitutional laws that disenfranchised literally hundreds of thousands of people from participating in our election, people who were and are disproportionately young, indigenous, uh, migrant and families who rent. Now, why did we decide it was OK to disappoint not only the sitting senator but a lot of politicians uh, and go through a public campaign and eventually go to the High Court. One of the values that we stand for that was the reason for this uh, is participation. We believe that broad public participation, both in our elections and in our democracy, uh, combined with declining corporate influence, if we can get there, will lead to progressive outcomes. And I think this is a really important statement uh, because our belief in strengthening democracy stems from our related belief that progressive outcomes will come from a political system uh, that better reflects the opinions of all Australians, including the one million, proportionate, the one, the one million Australians uh, who didn't vote, who weren't enrolled to vote at the last election. What do we believe in? What does our online movement stand for? We believe in the values of equality, care and compassion, sustainability and accountability. The things we stand for are these widely held views. And they're, in fact, so important uh, and so prevalent, uh, I think, because of what the internet allows us to achieve. It is, of course, the internet that sparks uh, mass public participation in democracies, the tool that we've been able to use. We believe that the majority opinion is a progressive opinion and that the way to demonstrate this power, the way to demonstrate this opinion is by using the internet to unlock mass participation in politics. But we are quite different as an online movement uh, in almost every way uh, to other NGOs uh, and to think tanks and to political parties. In fact, our complete reliance on social media, in which category, in this case, I'm including viral emails of the nature we send, uh, makes us a grassroots movement axiomatically it's obvious, therefore, that there is no astroturfing going on uh, because that, of course, would be against the fundamental principles behind the use of social media. In fact, I think it makes us more accountable in many ways uh, than all political parties in this country. I think it makes us accountable in many ways than all NGOs and all think tanks in this country. All of these groups rely upon and, of course, are accountable to their members in some way. Uh, political parties have to come back to the public every few years to get a mandate. Uh, but their internal party structures, at least in the major parties, see most members having very little actual power. Think tanks are, of course, accountable, you would assume, in some way uh, to those who write the cheques to keep them going. Uh, and NGOs are in some way accountable to those donors, in particular those membership fees uh, that get paid to keep them going. But it's no exaggeration, I believe, uh, to suggest that GetUp's power does come from its members, all of which, all of which begins online. Oxfam or Greenpeace can, of course, uh, run a TV ad uh, from their annual budget, and ultimately it's funded uh, by their members, but through general donations and membership fees. And at GetUp, of course, there are no membership fees. So if we're not in touch with the demands of members, were, of course, unable uh, to run an ad. GetUp members chip in in their thousands of small donations online. And if they didn't, our ads would literally go nowhere. If GetUp fails to respond to the wishes of our members online, uh, there would be a petition, of course, with no names, uh, with no volunteers, nobody attending events. Uh, there'd be a contact your MP campaign with no MPs actually ever contacted. Uh, and sure, our team of volunteers could make some calls, maybe make a TV ad or start a campaign. But unless it wins the support, and this is the great thing about online politics, unless it wins the support, in fact, not just the support, but the tacit support, uh, not just the tacit support, but in fact, 
the, evo the evoking of action, uh, really our campaigns would go nowhere at all. And this is the great power, I believe, of online politics. Some groups hire lobbyists to go to Parliament House and hassle politicians uh, online through GetUp, but also through so many other movements that are now beginning to use the power of the internet. Uh, thousands of members uh, pick up the phone, having been mobilised online. Uh, in our case, 25,000 members recently spent their time writing heart-wrenching stories uh, and faxing them to politicians about family members and friends who have been affected by the issue of mental health. And if we think about these numbers for just a second, if the average Get Up member spent around 10 minutes working on a fax or a phone call to an MP, uh, then that, in this case, is about 4,100 hours of time. That's about 521 working days, or the equivalent of me spending one and a half years of my full-time working life uh, on an issue. And thanks to the power of the internet, all of this happens within 24 to 48 hours. I still find it absolutely extraordinary. In the request to speak today, I was asked to respond to this question. Is GetUp a media organisation? Is it a democracy-focused NGO? Or is it a PR firm for certain types of policies? And the reality is, in my opinion, that all of these things are in some way true. But at its heart, it's just people getting together using the internet to get things done to win campaigns. And yes, those people, of course, believe in things. They believe in things and they're deeply political. The victories we've had, the victories all of us had, have had recently in working online, I think are made possible because of a media uh, that is social rather than asocial. In fact, GetUp's nature is indeed the very same nature behind social media. Like all social media phenomena, GetUp is possible because the web allows people to do things together, to be instantaneously and collaboratively active. So if you want to use a pejorative description, perhaps a better analogy than AstroTurf would be a viral disease, uh, or as I prefer to put it, a viral cure for our democracy. The very same things that make GetUp possible Interestingly enough, I think are also having a profound impact on how we as a society are consuming media. Uh, while Twitter is, of course, uh, one of the latest in a series of new technologies that have fuelled political debate, one of the key elements of the internet is that it has allowed amateurs, essentially amateurs, to do really professional things. And I'm not calling those people who are on Twitter right now uh, amateurs. I'm sure that they will hit me for that. These groups, just like broader people in society are, I think, increasingly knowledgeable, educated, committed and networked by new technology. But at its heart, this view lies in what is increasingly becoming, I think, a heated debate about the ethics of information sharing online and the role of sometimes even the competition, in fact, between bloggers and journalists. In many respects, this debate is similar to a less pertinent but importantly still present debate in the NGO sector, uh, a debate between established NGOs with traditional campaigning methods and a newer, more agile but at the same time more disruptive uh, group of NGOs. There are those who believe in mainstream media outlets just like there are those who believe in mainstream NGOs. Uh, but I think we are becoming a vital tool as we move towards 3.0. As GetUp grows increasingly, one of our challenges becomes whether or not we continue to have appetite for risk. Of course, as you grow as an organisation, you inherently have more to lose. I think this is, in wrapping up, one of the great challenges that we will now face. With so much to lose, can this online movement continue to be disruptive? Can it continue to take big risks? Going to the High Court was a $250,000 risk, a big risk for an organisation that would have been put on financial peril had we lost that case, and it was 50-50. So it was a big risk, but one we're very glad to have taken. So in wrapping up, where do we go from here? I think one of the crucial elements of ensuring that we continue to take risk uh, is, is going to be how much we further open up these online tools. Sure, the decisions that GetUp takes to run campaigns are in fact always made with the consultation of our membership. But our view is that it's just not enough yet. 
that in fact perhaps in the next year uh, we need to turn our own model on its head to hand over the tools to the Australian public, the intellectual property to the Australian public uh, and to see what others will do with these forms of technology. I understand there's been some very, very funny tweets over the last half an hour. That was a real struggle to get through. <laughs> but thank you very much. Cheers.